my friends. This is Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multiverse Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, big welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here for another episode of the Multiverse Nature Vlogmas. This is the third week for 2023, and um, this is my little Vlogmas where I have my fun, more holiday themed, my little Christmas tree and my little garland. And I talk about the Advents first, and then we'll get into the um, kind of typical podcast end of things. We'll talk about knitting, and um, I do have a couple acquisitions. I do not, I really am trying to not buy a lot of yarn and things of that nature, but I did find a great deal um, just before uh, like Black Friday end of things. So I did want to just let you guys know that. Um, so I'll share that with you at the end if you want to see those goodies. Um, but yeah, we'll get right in to the advent end of things. So I'll talk about my multiverse nature advent first. And, um, oh, I, I forgot to do this before, but if you do enjoy this content, um, I do tend to do podcasts like this of this nature, unedited, and I tend to talk about knitting and hand-dyed yarn because I um, am the dyer behind multiverse nature yarn. So if that interest you at all or you like to learn about knitting. Um, I do dabble in spinning as well so if any of that interests you definitely make sure that you like and subscribe and that way um, others that like similar content can find it and that way you'll also be notified when new videos are posted. So very exciting stuff. All right we'll get into the advent of things now. <laughs> so for this week's advent if you do not want it ruined um, I do this, I'm recording this Thursday night, but it's going to be posted on Sunday. So I don't want, so it won't be ruined for you, but if you don't, haven't opened your most Ferris Nature Advent yet, I don't want to ruin it for you. So definitely don't watch this part if you don't want to ruin. Okay. So this is this week's Advent colorway for Most Ferris Nature is a sock set. And the colorway is Silent Night. And here it is. So I just love it. I love all these colors. Like I said in the last weeks, I worked really hard layering all of these. They're very layered, speckled. Um, so this is primarily a kind of a teal, um, icy blue color. And then it has some really fun speckles. There's some red speckles throughout. And you can see that. And then there's a nice section of speckling here as well. And then there's some really dark black speckles here and there as well. So it's a really moody tonal with speckling going on. And this has a fun, warm, um, gray contrast color that goes with it. So this is the Silent Night sock set. And then of course it comes with the fun little bow. And this would be the one you'd be opening today if, well, Today is not the 17th, but opening the 17th. And yeah, so I absolutely love it. These are all one of a kind colorways. So if you are one of the lucky ones to snag this advent, then you will be one of the few that has this colorway. Um, I think I do have one still in the shop though, if you do want to get one, just so you know. So this is that Silent Night sock set. I am looking forward to it so much. So this is this week's. This was last week's. It is by the Chimney with Care. So those two. And then I'm going to show you here um, the first sock set, which I have started knitting with extensively, and I'm loving it. So I, if you're someone who um, gets bored by solid colors, this is a great way to keep yourself motivated, continue doing socks and things of that nature, or like um, knitting, if you're doing like um, just garter stitch or um, like a basic shawl that doesn't have a lot of detailing, having fun speckles and tonality and things of that nature really help you like continue knitting because you're excited to see what the next color looks like. So. Just a little tip that I've learned. <laughs> okay, so the first sock set that I had dyed up and I'm working with 
is right here in my Michigan Fiber Festival bag from last year. I think this was last year today. Okay. So this sock set, here we go, is the first first Sunday sock set, which is holiday cheer. So this is what the colorway looks like. Super beautiful layered, very much like the others, nice and layered, lots of good warm colors, super cozy. And then of course the contrast color is this beautiful red, like pleats out of colorway. And you can really see the beautiful contrast in this boot socks. That is the, um, I did bring the pattern. Ridgeline. Ridgeline boot socks. By, <laughs> I always put it in the notes, but Fawn Bustler. She's out of Michigan here. And this pattern is a newer pattern um, as of 2023. She just released it relatively recently. So I was really excited to cast it on for this set because it's going to be beautiful for the set. It has a really nice, um, way to cut to show your contrast color so you get to do there's so much interest in this box so I have to say if you're looking for if you're someone who gets bored with something that is just stockinette this is a really interesting pattern because the heel flap is really fun detailing of ribbing and um other little aspects this is paid for so I want to give it away but then there's the fun contrast heel and then there's also ribbing on the mid part of the foot. So if you can kind of see what's going on here, you've got your um, folded over cuff, which is my first time doing that. So that was fun. And then you get the color work session to do some color work and then stockinette. So that gives you that wonderful break and you just cruise through that. Let me tell you, I cruise through it because of the fun color work and it just keep, or, um, speckling really kept my interest. And then I did the ribbing, which was super fun and intriguing. And then the heel turn, and now I'm doing this ribbing here. And so it just constantly keeps your interest. I'm not getting bored at all. I really am enjoying it. I actually, like I said last week, same thing this week. I did not get to do as much knitting this week. We had a lot going on. Um, <laughs> a lot going on. So I didn't get to do as much knitting as I would normally like to. But um, I think I did quite a bit, though, because I'm pretty sure last week I was somewhere around here. So I, all of this was knit. So I this week. But I knit this during my lunch breaks, or much during breakfast, and sometimes a little bit in the evening. But primarily my lunch breaks is what I've been working on this for. So I'm cruising along. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not going to knit. Uh, well, I obviously, I'm not going to knit each sock set each week. Um, that would have been fun. That would have been a fun goal if I was a like really fast knitter. But I'm not, and that's okay. I'm not in a hurry to knit with them. I'll just enjoy them. But I, I would like to show you guys that I'm knit up, so I will get there eventually. I will work through them in, like, January, and <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy this Advent season for a long time. I'm just going to make it go as long as it needs to. But yes, I, I'm really enjoying this colorway. So this is Holiday Cheer. This is the first weekend of Advent for Multiverse Nature. You can see all the wonderful speckling. There's some green speckles. There's this really beautiful, like, vintage rose color in here. Um, we've got some dark brown. I'm just, I just love it. It's so cozy and hmm, just love it. So this is on my Merino Nylon Blend 75-25. It's a classic base. It's great for socks. Very durable. So... Just knitting away on that one and then the next advent I'm calling it an advent it was my Christmas gift is the um, Woolberry winter box and I did the book club winter box so basically the way it works is unlike advent um, there are four colorways that come with this box and you basically open a colorway as you're reading and yeah that's how it works so so what I did is I went in the book and split it up like 
put a marker on each page so I would my goal would be each week to read up to that page so each weekend I could open a new colorway so then it would be like an advent but I cheated I'm not gonna hide it I cheated <laughs> so I did I did I'm not gonna hide it um, I have been reading the book so I read it um, today just a little bit on my lunch break and I haven't read like a book like really read a book in a while I've done a lot of audiobooks lately because that's extremely convenient for my my lifestyle with what's going on so I tend to do audiobooks but I did do something today which sh it shouldn't be new to me but because I know I've read I've read books in the past I mean read a lot of books in my lifetime but I haven't like read like a hard book front to, uh, to back in a while and I have to say I did something today that probably is a no-brainer to some people but when I was reading I tried to actually picture the people so when I first started reading this book I was just kind of reading it and I was like all right you know it's okay it's not bad it's just not really getting me sucked in so today I just started to try to visualize really visualize because I'm a, I'm a creative person so I tried to visualize the person as she was talking about things and what was going on and when I did that I was more interested so maybe I'll enjoy it more so my goal tonight is to get a little bit more reading done uh, my goal tonight is to get as close to this this next color uh, little page thing I am well this many pages from it so I've got a little bit to read they're not you know not super hard to read pages so I'm sure I can do it if I really commit to it um, but I would really like to get to that because like I said I cheated so I opened that colorway before I got to that page why because well last weekend came and I really wanted to open it so technically in this video I should have opened color three by now but I haven't um, I'm just gonna be like a weekend behind on this because I was really trying to only open them when I read to the page but alas I got impatient and it's okay we're allowed to do these things so um, I do know what the colorway is inspired now by because I read some of the comments that people were talking about it because there's a discord group chat about this book and uh, the colorway is beautiful so I'll show you that but I'm gonna show you the first colorway as first so and I'm not going to tell you the names because I don't remember the names. Do they have the tag available? That would be, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Let's see. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. I don't think I see it in here, so I don't think I have it. Nope. I do not. That's okay. Anyway. I do not have it in here. But that's alright. So the first colorway is show you here so this is on an 80 20 base um, is what she has it dyed up on so this is the first color right this is going to ruin it for you if you have the winter box if you have not read up and opened the second colorway don't watch this part because I don't want to ruin it for you but I did ruin it for myself I didn't ruin it I didn't ruin it for myself but anyway here we have it so this is the first colorway, which is a beautiful gray, a nice warm gray, and then it has some like dark navy speckling throughout. It was inspired by a truck stop. I really enjoy a bus stop. I really enjoy how the colors are associating with the book, though. I do have to say I do enjoy that, and I think it was really smart to do that because it does help you motivate you like I really wanted to read to the next section before I opened the colorway I just got impatient with myself but I have to say it's it's quite beautiful so it's a beautiful tonal that's why you can see there's this wonderful um like dark and light grays going on and then there's the navy speckles and this is inspired by the bus stop where the main character in this book first sees her basically her love at first sight is basically what it is and and this is this is what that is inspired by and I have to say it's it's really beautiful and I can see that based off of what I read in the book so I think this is really neat and I'm enjoying it so I am working on a faded part or cardigan faded sweater it's called 
the foundation fade and it's based off of the um keep forgetting sorry guys one of these days one of these days i'll remember it's the resource raglan by sarah opie so it's um basically a version of the resource raglan resource raglan is basically your one size fits all raglan pattern you can make all kinds of alterations to your raglan you can do bust starts you can do um darting on your sleeves you can do uh, I, there's just so many things so many things i'm super excited about it it was a little more of an investment piece versus your typical pattern that costs around you know seven dollars us uh this was i think around i think it was 37 dollars or something like that is you know it's a little more of an investment piece but I was looking at it like it would be my one size fits all raglan pattern that I can then I love raglan sweaters. They're kind of one of my favorites. This is not is this a raglan? No, this is not a raglan. But most of my sweaters are raglan sweaters. So and by the way, I did not make this sweater. This was a super awesome goodwill find, thrift store find that my mom found. It's absolutely beautiful. It's so cozy warm, but it's airy enough that I don't get hot in it. I absolutely love it. It's a really nice sweater. 100% wool. Woo woo! Love my wool. Anyway, <laughs> so yes, so I'm almost at the fade point. That is why I opened the next color because I didn't want to be at the point where I would finish and then I couldn't proceed. To me, as much as I want to get the reading done, the knitting takes priority over the reading. So that's why I opened the next color. So here is the next color. It is stunning. The name of the colorway is Summer Hedgerow. So this is the color. It's a very pretty green. It's kind of a, dare I say, it's not really mossy. I would say it's a mossy green, <laughs> but um, it's, it's definitely mossy. I definitely see the hedge, like a hedge, you know, um, like boxwoods, like the little bushes. I kind of see that. I really do. And I think, and supposedly I haven't gotten to that point in the book. So I hope I'm not ruining this for anybody, but supposedly this color is inspired by the color of the main character's eyes because he's describing a memory that her eyes remind him of or something, which I mean, how romantic. <laughs> so yes, so this is that beautiful colorway. So this is the next color. Uh, here we go. So it will be fading from this to this one, which I'm excited, very excited. I think this is gonna be a beautiful sweater. Um, not my typical colors, not my typical colors, but kind of loving it. I do like green. So this is really pretty green, I have to say. I do like it. So that's gonna be the next color that I'm fading into. And then my little, little snowflake stoppers, which by the way, I don't know where you're at in the United States, but are you guys having a really wonderful winter? Okay, if you're someone who likes outdoor winter sports, you're probably having a depressing winter, which Sorry about that, but I actually am enjoying it quite a bit because it's been unseasonally warm. It's been in the 40s primarily this winter, and I am not complaining. Um, it makes getting to work great. I don't have to drive like almost an hour to work. I mean, that's a, that's wonderful. I am I am loving it. I think Christmas is supposed to be around the 40s here in Michigan. I mean, it could change by next week, of course. We've got a whole week. And the weather changes here pretty drastically. <laughs> like, I mean, it could change by 10 to 20 degrees in a day, so <clears throat> you just never know. But so far, I am excited. All right. So now that we talked about Advent's end of things, um, I wanted to talk about acquisitions. Now, this is one that I, I touched on last week, and I wanted to clarify it. So I ordered from webs, yarn.com. And I wanted to let you guys know, they they came through on their promise. And I am very, very pleased. So <clears throat> I had ordered a bunch of monostyle Uruguay, beautiful 
merino yarn from them and, and a lot of them are merino silk they're they're um they're fino is like the base extra fine merino and silk <clears throat> excuse me but the in transit the skin got damaged it's not exactly you know obviously it's not really Webb's fault it was probably the courier service but I don't know when it happened and I got the package and it was cut into and it was a very clear cut like it was cut and I immediately panicked because I'm like oh no you know wool yarn and sharp objects not a good combo and sure enough one of the skeins did get cut in like at least three places that I could see and that was frustrating <laughs> to say the least so I let them know right away and sent them documentation of everything and their customer service amazing they got back to me within a day they let me know that they were going to replace it and they sent me a replacement and they sent it like expedited shipping so it only took a couple days and I got my replacement skein um, there was I mean that is excellent so um, this is the replacement skein because I did not get to show you guys the colorway so the colorway is called poison and it's really pretty it's a deep 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 purple it's a reddish purple it's so pretty it's super super deep and this is gonna be like one of my deep colors on my um, my I think it's called the incredible blanket yeah the incredible blanket which I'm going to dub the healing blanket for me um, and that is what I am going to be combining with all of these beautiful colors I'm going to show you here in a second this box is going to just like overflow but there we go you kind of get an idea of the colors that are going to be involved in this stunning blanket and then this will be part of it as well so that will be whoa, <laughs> one of the really fun deep contrast colors that will be going on in that blanket this is going to be my healing blanket and I'm really excited about it um, it's going to be something that will take me a long time to make as is the meaning behind it itself so it's just a combination of a lot and I'm really excited to just work on it as, as slowly as possible and just get in, into it and it will be a comforting blanket that I can have um, yeah so I'm looking forward to that very much looking forward to working on that project now that I have all of the colorways <laughs> That was part of my reason I didn't start casting it on. I'm also focusing on Advent, but I definitely um, see myself casting this project on soon because it's going to be one of those projects I can literally just do a section of it and call it good done, and it'll just be like a nice slow project. So looking forward to that. And all right, acquisitions. The I just have a couple. I just have two. So. Um, and then I also want to talk, well, let's see, acquisitions or, okay, I'm going to talk about my, um, I do not have it here in the room with me and it's extremely heavy, so I'm not going to like hold it up and show you, but, um, my husband is almost done with my wonderful drum carter. It is awesome. You guys, it's so good. It makes huge bats and I'm going to show you the bat here just so you can see what it makes and just be as in awe as I am because I'm excited. So I actually used the drum carter and carted up the last of that first little Gotland fleece that I had and I'm so excited because it worked amazingly well and it's so soft and fluffy and now I can spin all of it. It's all carded and I didn't have to do any damage on my arms trying to cart it. So here is one of the ginormous <laughs> bats. So this is one bat that I made of that beautiful Gotland. And is that not, it's, it's enormous. So the drum carter is um, a 12 inch drum carter, like across, it's like 12 inches across. And then I think it's like 20, 22 inches, 21 or 22 inches around. So it's huge. It's crazy. I mean, 
how big that is. <laughs> so I'm super excited because I can spin from this. And so what I would do when I'm spinning this is I would just pull like the suction down like this so that it's basically roving at that point. And then I would just, um, yeah, go from there. So I have that all in here now. It's all carded. Oh, I'm so excited. Can you tell? I'm so excited. So I've got like, I don't know, four bats that are this size. This is actually a pretty dense bat compared to some of the others. I got a little like wild at the end. I just wanted to finish. So <laughs> that last one, I think I loaded up that drum carter so much, but I was like, let's just push it to like how far it can go. So that one is probably the thickest bat I should and will probably ever put on there, but I'm really excited about it. It was amazing. So he just has some final like finishing touches to do to it, but it works. It totally works. And um, I'm really grateful. That is so helpful. So yeah, I made those and so I got that all um, carded up, which that was great. I did that actually last week and I forgot to share that with you guys. So that was an oops on my part. Okay, now for acquisitions. That was kind of an acquisition, right? The drum carter. All right, so this was an investment, but um, quite the deal. So um, if I've talked about Plotilope before, it's unspun wool and it's absolutely wonderful. It's um, more on the rustic side of things. So if you're sensitive to wool, you may, um, not enjoy wearing this without something under it <laughs> but it is so stinking warm it is some of the most durable um, wool that I've knit up especially unspun wool and you do not have to hold this uh, like double with something for it to be durable when you knit it up because it's Icelandic wool so Icelandic wool has like a decent size staple length so if you do like well, little stitches there, you know, there, it's not going to come apart. It's not. And I have, I have two a hundred percent, um, Plotilope and my first, so my first Plotilope sweater that I ever made, I actually did hold it single with a strand of an alpaca laceway yarn that was from webs as well. And it was their Valley yarn. I cannot remember the name of it, but it's an alpaca lace weight yarn. If you go on their website, you can find it. And I held that, um, I don't think I needed to do that, but I did because I was doing, I mean, it's my first, it was my first time really working with Plotilope and it was such a tight little bitty stitches. I don't know. I just thought I was going to break it every time I worked with it and it would have totally been fine, but I did hold it with that. So the durability, I think would have been fine without it, but that one, it's hard for me to really compare what the durability is because I did hold it with that alpaca base, but I do have another, um, sweater. That's a Melly Hoffman sweater that I'm actually making a new one with new to den. So I have two of that, that pattern. It's the wildflower path and, um, the hundred percent Plotilope one. I did Plotilope held double and it, looks as good as it did when I first knit it up and I've been wearing it for well over a year. I think I've been wearing it for almost two years now and it looks bright. It looks just as, as good as it did the first time I wore it. So, um, yeah, it wears really, really well. So I did buy two more colors because they had a sale. They had a big sale going on. Um, they do have sales periodically and I think one of their best sales, I, I could be wrong, but I think one of their best sales tends to be in the summer and I, I usually miss it. I got it one year. I actually, I actually got it one year. Um, I get their newsletter, so I don't know how I missed it, but this year I got their newsletter and I saw that they had their sale and I was like, gosh, you know, I've been wanting this color, two colors in particular for a while. And I was like, well, if they have them in stock and they're obviously on the sale, um, they are coming from Iceland. So, that makes the shipping and everything worth it for me. So yes, they were on sale and I did snag them. So I normally don't, I, I do not buy, um, 
international wool very often because it is quite expensive to have things shipped internationally. But like I said, you get a good deal. And this now I can show you how they come again. So um, I ordered five skeins of the black, I think it's called black heather. So that's this first one. So I've got five skeins of that. Um, for a sweater, I really probably only need four, but I figured this would be great for making like socks or um, mittens, things of that nature. So that extra skein, it also would be great um, if I wanted to use it for like color work. So it's black, but it's really pretty black because you can see there's, um, it's a heather. So it has some probably like gray or white wool that they blended in with it so it gives it this really pretty heathered look. So this is how Plotillo becomes when you order multiple skeins. If you order only two, you probably will get them in the packaging. Um, my guess is they'll be in the packaging. I've never ordered less than four from uh, Alifoss. So this is from the Alifoss website. So it's um, a Icentic store. And, but, so this is how it comes. And it's really cool because when you, if you bought a whole tube of this, they're like, I think it's 12 cakes. I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot of cakes if you buy that, but, um, but this is the way it comes. So I'll show you this without ripping it, hopefully, there we go. So you can see that, right? So they're, the strands are connected. So what they do is they just, count off how many you want, one, two, three, four, five, they're the way it was spooled together. And then they just break one end and then they break um, the other end. So you end up with a really decent amount. You're gonna end up with some extra in there and do not just throw it away. So the nice part about Unspun is you can felt or um, like rub them to the ends together and use them. And for example, for Melody Hoffman's Wild Posy, no, not Wild Posy, no, the Wildflower Path. It was Wildflower Path. There's some embroidered flowers on there. And I kid you not, some of the section between that I had, um, because when I pull it, it, I ended up with strands that were probably around like so long and things of that nature. And I literally used those to embroider the flowers on the sweater. So I used like every single bit uh, except for maybe gosh not even an ounce of the wool like it was it was like nothing I had basically like no wool left I used every single ounce of that new to den so that's why or not new to den it the plutolopi that was plutolopi so I'm just saying like you can use it you can use like every bit of it and not waste it so this was the first color that I got. Um, I think the cost, I don't remember exactly how much it was per skein. Um, they have gone up in price, so if you've bought Plotolopi recently, you will know they have. Um, they used to be $9 US when you purchased them from the US. Um, when I used to purchase them from Elifoss, they used to be, um, they could be on sale for like, I'm trying to remember if it was like six dollars or something it was or less for a plate which is really good really good price um it was well under a hundred dollars for a sweater like it was around i think the first time i did it it was around fifty dollars a sweater which that's a hundred percent wool you guys a hundred percent wool that's a really good price so um Here's the other color that I purchased. So this one's fun. This is one I've been admiring for a while and I finally like took the plunge. <laughs> I was debating whether I wanted to buy it because it is quite the color, but I have wanted a like burnt orange and that's what the color is. It's burnt orange and it's pretty. I, I think it will be okay with my skin tone. You know, it's one of those, I, I wasn't sure, but I think it will be, especially if I hold, I have an alpaca brown, um, if I, which I'm using actually in my wildflowers path sweater right now. 
if I hold that with it, it'll add that extra little bit of depth because it'll add it, make it even more burnt looking like that burnt orange color. And this is the kind of orange that I can wear. Like there's oranges that I cannot wear and it'll make me look sick, but this one is not one of them. So this is actually looks exactly the same height as the other one, but this is only four cakes. So I, I ordered four cakes of this, which is what I need to make a sweater. There you go. Can I see that? So this was probably at the end of the, um, I don't know what they call it, like a bundle, because you could see the end has all these, these markations in it because it was tied up um, nice and tight. But this is the same thing where you can see that. Um, so this, it actually looks like they did separate it here, but for the most part, they're connected. And honestly, I cannot say that they necessarily separated this. This might have gotten separated in transit because <laughs> this has a story behind it. So um, apparently Elifos now does signature shipping. It would have been really good to know that. Um, like many people, <laughs> I, I work during the hours that the post office is open. So it's not really convenient for me to be able to go into the post office to get the yarn or obviously to be home to sign for it. So I, I really do, that's the one thing, if I have any um, complaint, I guess would be, I really wish that they would have made it known that they were gonna require signature at delivery because then I probably would have actually just shipped it to work. Um, that way, you know, my work, my place of business would sign for it and that wouldn't be a problem. So that's kind of the one thing that I have to say that I was a little disappointed in. Um, otherwise, their shipping's decent. I mean, it did take a couple weeks to get it, but I knew that was going to happen because it's coming from overseas. So I knew it was going to take a while. It took um, probably around three weeks to get it. But then on top of that... Um, then I added a couple extra days because my mail services were, I don't know. I, I know, I don't want to speak poorly of mail service. I know they work really hard, especially this time of year and they're running everywhere, but, um, it so happens that, that my husband was actually home when they attempted delivery of this package. So he could have signed for it, but they didn't actually like come to our house. They just put a little, we missed you note in our mailbox and I have to say that was pretty disappointing because then yeah it just added to a couple extra days because they didn't deliver it right away. I won't vent about it much but I will say that that was a little annoying <laughs> to say the least and I'm sure you guys have dealt with that as well. So a little disappointing but you can totally if you don't want to order internationally which I definitely understand obviously paying the shipping but it is nice to support your local um local people it's just expensive <laughs> the uh, cost of these items can be quite expensive here in the states but um, if you do want to support your local yarn store a lot of them and one of them including is webs so webs is a rather large yarn store um, and they do carry platalopi and i have purchased platalopi from them before and i think i think when i purchased it from them i only ordered um like two cakes because it was I was holding it single so I really only needed um, only needed two and then I just yeah held it double with something so um, those were individually wrapped so they're actually wrapped with their platalopi label so that's the funny part so when you order it like in bulk like this that it does not have the platalopi label which probably might be why it's an even better price because they didn't have to package it. So you're not paying for that packaging that they do uh, otherwise. So maybe that's part of the import, right? You're paying for the packaging. I don't know. Crazy. But I'd love to hear what you guys are up to. What are you making? Um, are you doing anything special for the holidays? Um, we do celebrate Christmas, so I have my little Christmas tree. Um, if you celebrate Christmas, I'd love to hear what some of your traditions are. Uh, we will be hosting Christmas this year, which that's exciting. Um, 
trying to get things planned for that. I've got some ideas of food and things to try to prepare ahead of time, which would be helpful for um, all of us. And so I'm going to start working on some of those things. I am going to start trying to mess with sourdough again. I did do sourdough in 2019. No, 2020. It was 2020. I did some um, sourdough uh, end of things. And now I'm starting with it again. And I'm really excited to start messing with that. I want to try my hand at making some sourdough rolls. I think that would be a lot of fun for Christmas to have some homemade rolls. Um, I mentioned in a prior video that I used to make homemade rolls for like Thanksgiving and everything with my family. So I would really like to try my hands at that and see how it goes. It looks relatively easy. It's just um, patience and all that good stuff. But I think that would be fun. And then I have a recipe for a... Like a, it's like a cranberry punch that, um, yeah, it looks really good. It has ginger ale in it, cranberry juice, um, I think there's pineapple juice in it, and then there's um, ginger ale, and you could cut up a lime in it, and some cranberries in it. I think it'd be really beautiful, and I think it'll taste really good, too. So, yep, I'm gonna try to throw that together, and... I am trying to work on my Advent uh, reading, so um, I did mention last week that was a pretty brutal week. I have not read much of my Advent this week, so I do need to kind of catch up on that, so that's what I'm going to do after I finish recording is to read my Advent, um, which hopefully it's going a little bit better this week than last week. Last week really uh, touched a sore spot for me, so... Um, yeah, hopefully this week's Advent reading, and it's the She Reads Truth Advent book uh, Bible study. If you, I'm sorry, I, I didn't explain that first. I should have. Um, but that's what it is. It's a Bible study. So uh, this week so far is better, but I have only read um, Mondays. I'm definitely behind because, like I said, we had quite a bit going on this week. Um, we had some, like, webinar stuff that we were doing and things like that. So it just... Yeah, I haven't gotten as much knitting or reading or anything really done this week. So I'm looking forward to catching up on that. Um, next week I should be able to catch up on some of that too. I took up some, off some time, so that'll help with preparing things too for Christmas. Um, organizing, all that good stuff. That end of year thing, right? Like organizing, going through clothes and donating things that um, I haven't worn, all that good thing. So love to hear if you are kind of similar minded. I tend to seasonally go through my clothes, so every season I'll go through and make something that hasn't been worn in a while. I don't see myself wearing it. Maybe it doesn't fit anymore. Um, I've been starting to donate them, and I feel so much better because sometimes those items that don't fit you anymore, it's better to not hold on to them. I know I used to think, well, if I get back to that weight or what have you, but honestly, if you get back to that weight, I, at this point, I'd rather just reward myself with a little piece of clothing that fits really nicely, and I think I'm going to go with that. So that's going to be my mentality going into it, um, trying to go through things to donate, and um, yeah, go from there. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys are up to and how you're doing, and if you're going to be hosting Christmas or um, if you're going to a Christmas party or get together, I'd love to hear any um, dishes that you might be making or bringing with you because I always love to learn new recipes. That's actually part of that um, Advent book, the book study that I'm reading. There's some recipes for really yummy looking cookies and there is one in there I actually want to try to make. So I like gingerbread cookies a lot. Um, so I actually want to try to make those. So I think I'm going to try to do that this weekend too. I'm piling on a lot of things this weekend. I really shouldn't do that, but I kind of want to make the gingerbread cookies and listen to Christmas music while I make them. <laughs> but um, you basically make a, a chai vanilla icing that goes on top of them. I don't know. It sounds really good. So I'm going to try my hand at that. And then um, I figured those could be some cookies that we could have at Christmas as well. And have with tea and coffee and all that good stuff. So hope you guys are well. 
I hope you're doing okay. Um, I know this time of year can be quite difficult. I am having a hard time. I'm doing better today. I am doing better this week than I was last week, um, which is great. And um, I've been journaling more again, which that I think has helped me as well. Helps me get things on paper and not keep it all up here all the time because that could be too much sometimes. Um, and, oh, I wanted to mention another other podcaster that I wanted to recommend. She's not a knitter. She's, um, she likes to read a lot and, um, it's Morgan and I should have written it down. Um, I think if it's going to come to me here, but you know what? I wonder if I could be so bold as to search on my website right now. I'm just going to do that because, um, it's, oh, I don't have time to do this. Sorry. I want to tell you what it is because I went, I, I've been watching her vlogmas, which is wonderful. She's wonderful. I love watching all of her videos, period. But, um, I really, really have been enjoying her videos during this Advent season because, as I mentioned, um, I've been having a difficult time, and I found that her videos are just wonderful. Um, you know what? I'm just struggling. Sorry. <laughs> I'm having an issue finding them, but I will post her information in the... If you go to the more info of this video, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, post it there. That way you guys will easily be able to find it. So, um, I'll post it there and her name's Morgan and it's her and her dog Rue, which is adorable. So we call, so we have two dogs. We have Maverick who is a mini Aussie and we have Rory who is a mutt and a half. She's like a mix of all kinds of things probably. But, um, I, I call her Rue all the time, like short for Rory. And Morgan's dog's name's Rue. That's his name. And he's so cute. He's all black. A sweet little dog. And yeah, I have to say, so it her and then um I'm pretty sure it's her boyfriend Landon. Um, yeah. They're they're all wonderful. And um she likes to cook and so her videos are just absolutely wonderful and positive and she has a lot of introspective things, which I think is, is good. She's very honest about some of the struggles she has had in her life. And um, I think that is important that, you know, we, we talk about these things. So, yes, I will definitely share her channel information below. So if you want to check it out, you may enjoy her videos as well. Um, she's a very soft-spoken individual as well. And... I just figured it's always nice to find other podcasts that may be positive and um, something you might enjoy. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> she does, um, uh, what is it? Like, <laughs> she's an illustrator. There we go. <laughs> like, what does she do for a living? She illustrates. Um, and so she does beautiful artwork. So, definitely check her out. All right. I think that's it for this week. And, um, I will be catching up with you in our last vlogmas, which is next week. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. That went by really fast, really fast. And I'm trying to just savor it. I'm trying to enjoy it so much because I, I love this time of year. That's, that's, I think what's so hard. I love this time of year. I love this season, but this season of my life right now has been difficult and it has made the season that I love so much a lot harder than it normally is. So, um, I am just grateful that I'm feeling a little bit better and I'm actually, it probably has a lot to do with, well, many different things going on right now. I have supportive people in my life that they have helped. Um, but then, I mean, this, we've been so fortunate, like I said, with the weather, we've had sunny days. We've had sunny days the past couple days here in Michigan, which this is rare this time of year. Usually it's dark and gray from like December until March. <laughs> so 
So like three, four months of darkness. So, I mean, the fact that we've been getting sunlight has probably helped me quite a bit. I mean, I have vitamin D issues, so like that, I get that seasonal affective mood disorder, that's for sure, because vitamin D deficient. So yes, gotta get your supplements, a lot of supplements in. Anyway, all right, I'll wrap this up and end this here, but I look forward to chatting with you guys soon. And until then, have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care.